I am Brother Stephen Elabo, welcoming you to the Life Bible Church, Charlottesville, United States, a place where the undiluted Word of God is being preached. You are about to listen to our general superintendent, Pastor W.F. Kumoye, as a comfort to share the mind of God with you and your family. I want you to be ready to pick up your pen and your paper and jot down important messages as they will do you good. God bless you and remain blessed. Heavenly Father, we thank you today. We bless your name because you brought us together. We thank you, Lord, for everyone here listening. And we thank you for everyone everywhere outside the headquarters here listening. We know that something good is going to happen. Something great and marvelous is going to happen. You are going to touch every lad. You are going to change everything. I'm asking, Lord, that every problem represented here tonight, you take everything away in Jesus' name. I pray that nobody will go back home the same in Jesus' name. Lift us higher. Take us higher. Higher than we have ever been before. Take us in Jesus' name. Confirm your word in every life. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Thank you very much. We can sit down. We're coming to Isaiah chapter 40. And I'm going to read from verse 28 to verse 31. As we come together at this time, I want to assure you tonight, the power of God is here. I want to assure you, every problem you have brought, every challenge you have brought, every difficulty you have brought, everything is vanishing away tonight in Jesus' name. Look at Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28. As thou not known, as thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, he fainteth not, neither is he weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faith. Power is coming to you tonight. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord, they that wait upon the Lord, anybody there waiting upon the Lord, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run, they shall not be weary. You will run, you will not be weary. They shall walk and they shall not faint. You will walk and you will not faint in Jesus' name. It looks like a long time now since we saw face to face. But great things are happening. And I want to report to you, God is answering your prayer that you are praying every time for your pastor, your father in the Lord. And many, many miracles are happening everywhere. Amen. And your own is going to happen tonight. Since the last time we saw face to face, I've been in Zambia. And in Zambia, there was um, a lady that uh, had one finger cut. She was trying to close the door. And then she banged the door on one of her fingers. And the finger caught a part of it and fell on the ground. In her pain and confusion, she ran to the hospital. And she said, I need help. When they saw the hand, they saw... 
And he said, where is the part that cut off? And she said, it's in the house. They sent somebody to the house and picked it up. They said they couldn't sew it again because it's taking some time. Then she went to another hospital, a Chinese hospital. They told her the same thing. She was very sorrowful. And then she came back home. She spoke to the sister leading the women there, the wife of the pastor. And eventually, the courage just says it's not sickness. It's just that that finger is caught. And eventually, we're having program here at the headquarters. There is power at the headquarters. And we're transmitting the program like we're doing tonight. And she said, here is my finger. It is deformed. It is caught. By the way, the other part that was caught on the ground had been thrown and flushed away in the toilet. All she did was to point that finger to the screen. As we said, the final amen, the finger grew back. If that is happening, if that is happening, far away, when we cannot see face to face, how about you today here, a miracle is coming your way. In Zambia, a brother went to have, went to take a son of a neighbor to the meeting. That son was totally blind, nine years of age. And eventually we prayed, like we're going to pray tonight. The Lord is going to take you higher. After the prayer, it appeared that nothing happened, but something has happened. And to you, something is happening. They got back home. Uh, in the morning, the following day, the boy got up and could see everything clearly. Now, blind eyes are opening. And by the grace of God, if you are blind tonight, sight miraculously is coming to you in Jesus' name. We left there, then I went to Burkina Faso. In Burkina Faso, I got there before the meeting. And uh, before the meeting, I had to visit the local churches. And some of the members were waiting in their churches. It wasn't to preach, it wasn't to pray, it was just to see them and see those local churches. But we had a sister there that was paralyzed, having crutches. And she sat at the edge. And when all the other people stood up to wave and to greet me, she couldn't do that because she was totally paralyzed. As I came into the church building, I waved at her and said, God bless you. I can wave it to you now and I'm saying, God bless you. You are blessed tonight in Jesus' name. And so I got to the front of the church and I said, I'm happy to be here. It's wonderful and all that. I could say this starting tonight. It's not time for preaching now. It's not time for prayer now. Come in the evening and then the Lord will touch you. And then I said bye-bye. I was going out. As I was going out, because she was paralyzed and she was sorrowful, I felt that I would encourage her. I said, my sister, you'll be all right. And then I took hold of her hand and said, God bless you. And as I came out, all the other people ran out just to say bye-bye. And she was the only one remaining in the hall. And then she said, how is it? I'm not able to stand up. I'm not able to go and greet the pastor bye-bye. But the pastor said, God bless you. And said, you'll be all right. All of a sudden, she threw the sticks away. And she got up. And she got up. And she wanted to catch uh, the, the car so that she too can wait for me. And she started walking and then started running. The Lord healed her completely. In the evening when we were to give testimony, the lady came up and uh, the brother going to interview her said, but you are not sick. You don't have any problem. She said, you don't know me. I'm the one in the afternoon. The pastor said, God bless you. And now I'm working very well. If that is happening to them over there, something is coming your way tonight. 
but Burkina Faso, we were in Togo. In Togo, there was uh, this uh, woman, she had cancer. And the cancer was in the final stage. It was like she was going to pass off any time. And then that night, we prayed. As we were praying, she began to vomit blood. And they gave her a bowl, and she vomited much blood into that bowl. As we said, the final amen, then the vomiting stopped. She got up completely well, totally miko. And the pastor said, that woman healed of cancer is still totally healed. Your healing will be permanent in Jesus' name. From Burkina Faso now, I was in the uh, Benin Republic, and there was uh, this a young man, 22 years of age. She, he was born with a part of the body missing. That is, he was not complete. And he was feeling ashamed because it was an obvious problem in their family. All the other children, all the other people, every part of them complete. But in his own case, it was just like that. And then, in, uh, you know, we prayed and said in the name of Jesus, whatever miracle you need, get it right now. Before we opened our eyes, a creative miracle had taken place. And that part that was missing from birth had been created instantaneously. Tonight is your night. I said tonight is your night. There was a woman that had big, goiter on the neck and uh, so we rounded up and then I said let us pray and we, we close our eyes before we open our eyes that goiter had vanished away and so the power of God is at work and that power is coming to you tonight in Jesus name but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles. And then it says, they shall run and they shall not be weary. I said, you will run, you will not be weary. They shall walk and they shall not faint. You will not faint. All your faith will be taken away in Jesus' name. Tarrying for God's power manifestation. Tarrying for waiting upon the Lord. Tarrying for God's power manifestation manifestation. I divide the message to three parts. Number one, God's eternal power for the weary. God's eternal power for the weary. If you're weary, if you're troubled, if you're sick, if you're oppressed, if you're afflicted, if you're discouraged, you're weary. There is God's eternal power. And that power is for you tonight. It will roll away your problem. In Genesis chapter 18 and verse 14. Genesis chapter 18, verse 14. It says, Is any sin too hard for the Lord? Is any sin too hard for the Lord? The Lord is challenging you tonight. Look at the problems you have. Look at what makes you weak and weary. Look at what's oppressing your life. And look at the depression of your life. And the Lord is saying, tonight, at the end of this message, when we call upon him, he will answer your prayer. If you are wondering, the mountain is too big. The situation is too hard. I want to tell you, there is nothing too hard for God. Impossibilities only with men. There is no impossibility with our God. Tonight is your night. What men have failed to do, God will do it in your life. Tonight you will have a testimony. He has done it for others. He is doing it for others. And yours will not be an exception tonight in Jesus' name. In Jeremiah chapter 32. Jeremiah. Chapter 32, reading from verse 17. Here is the assurance the Lord is still giving us this. Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power. 
Think about the whole universe. Think about what you can see and what you cannot see. Think about the orderliness and the vastness of the earth. And this is what God has created in his mighty power, in his mighty strength. If he has done that, what do you think of the little problem you have, of the little challenge you have? He spoke and it came to pass. He's going to speak tonight. It will come to pass in your life. He spoke the words of power, the words of authority, and the words that breaks every yoke, and that God is still the same. His power is still the same. His authority is still the same. Tonight, it will come your way. Not God that was made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretch out arm. There is nothing too hard for thee. There is nothing too hard for thee. Can we say that together? In my life, there is nothing too hard for thee. In my family, there is nothing too hard for thee. In my job situation, there is nothing too hard for you. In my spiritual life, there is nothing too hard for me. Whatever you may seek is hard for men, it's not hard for God. Impossible for men is not impossible with God. The Lord will do it tonight. Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 19, rather. Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. For Jesus beheld them and said unto them, What does that mean? Is that Jesus is looking at the way you are thinking. He's looking at the analysis you are making about your problem. And then he stands in, the front, in front of you and he beholds you. He looks at you. And he says unto you, with men, this is impossible. But with God, but with God, all things are possible. In fact, the way God works instantaneously is almost surprising, almost unbelievable. I told you about the woman that had cancer in Togo. Another woman came there uh, to that Togo program. And this woman had been abandoned by the husband. This woman, having children, the husband left her and left the children. She was suffering. She became angry. She became bitter. And it was like she wanted even whatever will happen because she had been fed up of life. It had taken three years and the husband had been away. And the husband will not even contact her or give any money or send anything. They were totally, completely separated, although not divorced. And eventually she was brought to the meeting. At the meeting, as I was speaking, I said, whoever has, forgive, whoever has offended you, forgive. Then she began to think about that. Forgive? She remembered her husband. I said, that man, how can I forgive him? I've been suffering this way, suffering this way. These children are suffering. How can this be? And then eventually I said again, God will give you the grace. He will give you the grace. Anybody there said he will give you the grace. <laughs> what you think is impossible for you is possible with God. It will happen tonight in Jesus' name. And so while I was uh, saying that God will give you the grace, we will forgive, and everything will be all right. And eventually, she said, oh, Lord, help me. He will help you. So forgive this man. And in her heart, she forgave. But she saw that her telephone was uh, kind of vibrating because she put it on silent. When we finished the prayer, she looked at the telephone. During that time of preaching the message and during that time of having the grace to forgive the husband God had touched the husband where the husband was 
I said God touched the husband where the husband was. And the husband had called her five times. Within that short time of preaching the message. How many times did I say the husband called her? Five times. And then she called the husband back. Remember, for three years, they have not been talking. Hatred, bitterness, anguish, anger, everything. But within that time, the husband called five times, and she called. And then, uh, so the, well, the wife said, I saw your missed call. He said, yes, my, my wife, where are you? I want to see you now. I want to come home. I'm sorry. And she became to apologize. Cause the long story short, within that period, they reconciled. And the man said, sorry all that the woman has lost, brought money, brought everything. Now they are living happily together. With man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Your problems are solved tonight. Your mountain is taken away tonight. Something is happening already. Even before we pray, something is happening already. You will be the recipient of God's miracle power tonight in Jesus' name. With men, it appears impossible. With men, it is actually impossible. But not with God, because with God, all things are. I want to hear you. It is not in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Jesus said unto him, He's talking unto you now. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, Lord, I believe. If thou canst only believe, Lord, I believe. All things are possible to him that believeth. All things are possible. I see possibilities in your life tonight. I see salvation in your life tonight. I see healing in your life tonight. I see deliverance in your life tonight. All those battles you have been fighting, I see that win the victory tonight. Everything becomes possible. All things are possible for him or to him that believe it. Let's come back to Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. I'll be looking at point number one. God's eternal power for the weary. Number two. Great exchange power for the weak. Great exchange of power for the weak. Tonight, there's going to be an exchange. You will give your weakness unto the Lord. He will give you his strength. You will give your sickness unto the Lord. He will give you his healing. It's as simple as I give you a pen, you give me a paper. I give you a substance, and you give me something else. You are going to make an exchange for the Lord tonight. As we stand up to pray, when we finish the message, we say, Lord, here is my sickness. Take it from me. And Jesus will say, I receive, I take your sickness. Here is my healing and my health I give unto you. I thought you would say, Amen. <laughs> here is my poverty. You give your poverty to the Lord, and the Lord will say, here are my riches. He will give you his riches. I have been wondering, I've been thinking, here is my confusion. I give my confusion to you. And the Lord will give you his own signs and wonders tonight. A great exchange of power for the weak. There's an exchange tonight. Look at it. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29. He giveth power to the faint. That is, those who are fainting, those who are weak, those who are weary, those who are lifeless, those who are powerless, you give him your lifelessness. You give him your weakness. You give him the totality of your problem. And he'll bring supernatural solutions to your life in Jesus' name. 
He giveth power to the faith. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall do what? Shall renew their strength. Your strength is renewed tonight. Your problems are taken away tonight. Do you remember the story of Jacob? It's in Genesis chapter 32. Genesis chapter 32. Reading from verse 26. Genesis 32, verse 26. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let you go. Tell me. I will not let you go. Tell me the rest. I will not let you go. Except thou bless me. Wait here for a moment. There are some people that say that they are waiting for the Lord to bless them. And they say it depends on the Lord. They say, what can I do? I want healing. If God wants, he will heal me. I want deliverance. If God desires, he will deliver me. And if he says, it is not tonight, then it is not tonight. What can I do? If he says, my healing, my deliverance, my freedom, the breaking of my yoke, my miracle, the creative miracle, if he says it's not tonight, what can I do? Jacob said, I want a blessing. I'm going to have a blessing. And when the angel said, let me go, for the day breaketh, Jacob said, no, you cannot go, except you bless me. If you will take your stand like that, if you will take your stand and say, tonight is the night of my blessing, nothing will change it. Jacob had the final say. He said, I will not let you go, except you bless me. Tonight, you have the final say. If you say, tonight is the night of my blessing, it is so in Jesus' name. Tonight is the night of my healing, it is so in Jesus' name. If you say, I will not live here tonight, except this happens, that thing will happen. Verse 25. Verse 27. In verse 27, and he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall no more be called Jacob, but Israel. Tonight it will change your name. Tonight it will change your nature. If they have been calling you, you always see, you always see Mr. Sickness, Mr. Sickness. That name will change your life. Yeah. Evil things will not be attached to you anymore. Weakness will not be attached to you anymore. Defeat will not be attached to you anymore. A change is coming. I said a change is coming. I said a change is coming. I receive it in Jesus' name. The name shall no more be called Jacob. For as a prince, thou hast power with God and with men, and have prevailed. Tonight you are the victor. Tonight you prevail. You will be the strength and the power of your life tonight in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 9, verse 43. Luke chapter 9. Verse 43, the great exchange of power for those who are weak. There's an exchange tonight. It takes everything negative away from your life. And it brings the positive to impact your life, to influence your life. In Luke chapter 9, verse 43, and they were all amazed at the power of God. But while they wondered everyone at all things which Jesus did, he 
said unto his disciples, Let these sayings sink down into your ears. All that you are hearing, let them sink deep into your ears, into your mind, into your heart. What they have got, you will get. What other people have received, you are going to receive tonight in Jesus' name. Because God is a God of power. Is a God of authority. Is a God of might. With him, all things are possible. And tonight, it is so. I said tonight, it is so. Those battles you have been fighting, fighting with the devil, the devil for you is conquered tonight. Those battles you have been fighting, fighting with evil spirits and demons, all that battle is coming to an end tonight in Jesus' name. The dream that made you afraid because they came in real combat and it's like they told you in the dream that you will never escape this one. I come to tell you by the revelation of the law all those enemies they are conquered in Jesus' name. Tonight, the Lord will put joy, happiness, laughter in your mouth in Jesus' name. Let that sink deep into your ears because Jesus is going about here tonight manifesting his power. And as he gets to you, hand over your sickness. He will give you healing. Hand over your affliction. He will give you deliverance. Hand over your joblessness. He will give you the employment. Hand over your childlessness. He will give you the child. Hand over all the impossibilities in your life. There's an exchange of power tonight, and that will happen unto you. In Acts of the Apostle, chapter 10. Verse 38, Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about, he went about, I said he went about doing good. He will do good in your life. And healing how many people? healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. That's why you came tonight. As you came tonight, you're just going to make the great exchange. And you take all the problems of your life, give unto the Lord. It will be exchanged with a supernatural power. We come to Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. Reading from verse, 4, verse 31 now. But they that wait upon the Lord, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Wait a moment. It's not some of them, all of them, all of us waiting upon the Lord. You have come. Today, I have to wait upon the Lord. And it says, everyone waiting upon the Lord, you will renew your strength. God is not a partial God. He doesn't answer one and then leave the other one not answered. He's not a God of partiality, a God of favoritism, a God irrespective of persons. No, he says, they all of us, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. It says, they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. You are mounting up. You will not remain in the dungeon of problems anymore in Jesus' name. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. This race before you, 
in your personal life, you will run, you will not be weary. The race of your spiritual life, if you have been tired, you have fatigue, it's like I don't know I can move on. Tonight, power will enter into you. You will rise up, you will run this race, you will not be weary in Jesus' name. The race in your family that I've been running, and it's like I've done my best, I've tried my best, I've run the race, but it's like I cannot make it. You will make it. From this night, your weakness will be turned into strength. Every seed that you were trying, I'm giving up. I cannot. I'm giving up. I cannot. I come to tell you tonight, you will not feel anything. But the power, mighty power of the Lord will come upon your life in Jesus' name. And they shall walk and they shall not faint. I will not faint. I will not faint. All that fainting will be taken away. All the tiredness will be taken away. All the impossibilities taken away. There will be a reality. Spirituality of the power of God manifesting in your life. Psalm 25, waiting upon the Lord. Psalm 25, waiting upon the Lord, verse 5. In Psalm 25, verse 5, lead me in thy throne. Teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I Wait all the day. You see that? Teach me. As you are waiting upon the Lord, He will teach you what to do. He will lead you the way you ought to go. All the confusion of your life, everything is coming to an end. Verse 21. In verse 21, let integrity and uprightness preserve me for I wait on thee. Preservation has come upon your life. All the destruction coming from the threats of the enemy tonight has to come to wait upon the Lord. They have come to an end. Psalm 27 verse 14. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thine heart, which I say on the Lord. It says, as we are waiting, the Lord is performing an operation in your life already. He's transferring strength into your life, transferring power into your life, transforming, tra transforming your life and changing everything because this is the heritage of the people that wait on the Lord. Psalm 37. In Psalm 37, reading from verse 9. Psalm 37, reading from verse 9. For evil doers shall be cut off. You will not be among them. Evil doers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord they shall inherit the earth. You have an inheritance. You have an inheritance. Because of waiting upon the Lord, you will inherit everything you need on this earth in Jesus' name. Verse 34. In verse 34, wait on the Lord and keep his way. And he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. You have an inheritance. It will be yours tonight. And your inheritance, nobody will take away from you. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. But it will not come near you. The Lord has prepared something for those who wait upon him. While we're waiting on the Lord, he's preparing something for you. What eyes have never seen. What years have never heard. What men and women have never perceived. They have never understood. 
while we're waiting on the Lord, he prepares that for his own people. This particular promise of preparation, provision, protection, privilege, every good thing for the people waiting upon the Lord. The Lord himself has given us the revelation and the interpretation in the New Testament in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. Remember, this is the revelation concerning those who wait upon the Lord. And you have come to wait upon the Lord. There is something the Lord has prepared for you. What men will not understand. What has never entered into the heart of man. The great things the Lord has prepared for those that wait upon the Lord. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. But as it is written. Where is it written? As it is written. Where is it written? Isaiah chapter what? 64. Verse what? Verse 4. That's what the apostles is referring to. The people that wait upon the Lord. The preparation. The revelation. The inheritance. The good things that the Lord has prepared for them. As it is written. I has not seen. Yes, have not heard. Neither have entered into the heart of man. The things which God has prepared for them that love him. Love him. Wait on him. We're waiting on him because we love him. And we know he loves us. And what you have never seen in your life, tonight you will see. What you have never heard in testimony concerning other people tonight, will hear it in your own testimony in Jesus' name. Whatever inheritance you need from the Lord, salvation, he has prepared it for you. Healing, he has prepared it for you. Deliverance, he has prepared it for you. Strength and mind, he has prepared it for you. Every good thing you desire from the Lord, he has prepared it for you. You will run, you will not be weary. You will walk and you will not faint. And the inheritance and the good things the Lord has prepared for those who wait upon him is coming your way right now. I said, it's coming your way right now. It is for everyone that wait upon the Lord. It doesn't matter how you feel. A blessing is coming your way. I said, a miracle is coming your way. You wait on the Lord, you receive. You wait on the Lord, you are empowered. You wait on the Lord, you are blessed. You wait on the Lord, you are saved. You wait on the Lord, you are healed. You wait on the Lord, you are delivered. You wait on the Lord, you are set free. It has come. I said it has come. Why are you sitting down? I said it has come. Tell the Lord, I have been waiting upon you. I have been waiting upon the Lord. And this is your moment. And this is your time. If you need salvation, it's prepared for you. If you need healing, it's prepared for you. If you need power, it's prepared for you. If you need breakthrough, it's, a, it's prepared for you. If you need deliverance, it's prepared for you. It's there. It's there. It's there. It's coming your way. Tell the Lord, yes, I believe. Tell the Lord, yes, I believe. Tell the Lord, yes, I believe. With men, this is impossible, but not with God, because with God, all things are possible. It's prepared for you. Make an exchange. Give him your sin, he'll give you his righteousness. Give him your sickness, he'll give you his health. Give him your failure, he'll give you the success. Give him your defeat, he'll give you the victory. Give him your affliction, he'll give you the freedom, the dominion, the deliverance. A great exchange of power. A great exchange of power. A great exchange of power. Give him your problem. Give him your problem. He'll transfer the solution to your life.
It's your night. It's your night to receive what eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard, what has not yet entered into the heart of man. The great things the Lord has prepared for them that wait upon him. He's prepared it already. And he's here. And he's here. He's standing by your side right there. And he's giving it to you. He's giving it to you. Give him your sickness. Receive his help. Give him your problem. Receive his solution. Give him your sorrow. Give him your sadness. And receive his joy. Give him your lifelessness. And receive resurrection life. Resurrection power in your life. He's here for you. He has prepared great, wonderful things for you. Give him your misery. He'll give you his miracle. He's not a partial God. He's not a God who plays favoritism. Everyone, everyone, everyone waiting upon the Lord. What a great opportunity we have here tonight. You're waiting on the Lord. A miracle is coming your way already. Salvation is coming your way already. Strength, spiritual strength is coming your way already. Make an exchange. Make an exchange. Make an exchange. He sees you there. He knows you there. He loves you there. He's giving it to you right now. Miracle. Healing. Deliverance. Anointing. Strength. Job. Wife. Husband. Children. What God has prepared for them that wait on him. For them that wait on him. He has you in mind. He's thinking about you. He's planning concerning you. He's giving it to you right now. You'll see it. You'll feel it. You'll know it. Things you've never seen. Things you've never heard. What never entered into your heart before. What the Almighty God is preparing for the people that wait on Him. In Jesus' name we pray. You know, you will not be an exception. You're waiting on the Lord. You're looking up to the Lord. You're saying, Lord, I am here. He sees you right there. It's going to happen now. This mountain that you have carried, that you've seen up to this point, You'll see, it will vanish away. There's condemnation in your heart that the devil is knocking at and striking at every time. Condemnation will go away. Head bad and eyes closed. You know, God has a lot he wants to do for you. And if it so happens that you need salvation. Wonderful. Everybody say wonderful. Salvation is when God forgives all our sins. Big sins, small sins, common sins, terrible sins, crime, everything. 
what we're feeling guilty about. That the devil is always pointing at and saying, uh, you, you think God will answer your prayer? 